Well, it's bound to happen. I pressed the off button while I was taking you out and missed that bit. So, right, this is an add-on to the last one uh, about the um, shooting board. So anyhow, um, this is clamped up. Come around here so you can see better. So the, um, let's pull you out a bit. There you go. So plane is sitting nice on the shooting board. That's good. That's all good. Uh, I can't, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be daft and risk holding my, dropping my phone. That's very good. So I'm pleased with that. The clamps are just hanging off the bench. Look, the whole thing's just hanging off the bench. Three clamps on there. Glue oozing out. So that's good news. That's good news. Do you want to know? So in a way, I'm really gutted that I pressed the off button and I cancel that video. But you've, you've come from that previous video. Hopefully you've come from that previous video about the shooting board. Rob Cosman method. And it's very good. And except for there's a couple of bits that I prefer. Um, the bit that nobody really measure, measures and nobody really looks at is once this is all together and all done. Curie, let me put you in the. Let me put you back on that thing, and you'll you'll see what I mean. Hang on, is that better? Can you see what? Let's move that toy bar out of the way. Right. So the bit I'm going to show you is the bit that nobody really goes through, which is once you've set this up square, which I have, and I'm happy with that. How about you just double check that that's square? And it's not. This isn't square. My plane isn't square. So now this is the problem. All of this is incredibly accurate and great to this flat surface, which I know is flat. But now, I've, now I'm checking for square. It's not quite square. It needs a little bit of work and I will go through that. Shall I go through it now? I've, st I've just poured that cup of tea. I really ought to finish that tea off. Um, let me put you, let me move this out of the way, put you in a comfortable position to see exactly what I'm on about. So hang on a second. Let's just get you. Right, so I've moved you a couple of times. I'm trying to get this in a position where I can show you rather than just saying it's this much out. And, and I've got a problem with it. Um, it is a touch out. It's a bit too fat there. So I need to take a bit off that edge. Um, one thing I do quite often is use the stock of a square on the short side. I'm not going to, if I put it like that, you see how far this, this, oh, sorry. If I put it like that, you see how far this is out. Whereas if I actually put it against there, it exaggerates how far it is. And if I do that like that, let me see if I can get that piece of paper in the end there. I think I probably could, which is about four thou. Yeah, I can get it in. So it's about four thou. So there isn't there really isn't much to take off there. So I'm going to get some paper and I'm going to do that. You can watch if you want. Do you want to watch? Let me just. Right, so it's not brilliant because I wasn't expecting to do it, but there's a bit of uh, 240 grit there, just sellotape down. I'm just going to put some um, some uh, pressure on this edge here. That bit's okay. And let's see where this takes us. Um, Yeah, it's taking it off there. Okay, so that this might not be too, it might not take too long. I mean, the good thing about this is I'm holding it where I'm going to, the way I'm going to be holding it, I'm pushing it the way I'm going to be pushing it. So I'm just leaning it over from the handle, just over slightly, without actually lifting it off the surface, so that all the, the emphasis is on this edge. I don't know whether you can see that. 
Um, oh, it's ever so difficult so shorting, sorting you out in reverse. Can you see that down here? Might be better when on my fingers there if I do that. So I've not, it's just touched a bit around here, but it's mainly taking it off that edge. Um, and it's actually never been done before because I'm seeing some lovely mill marks on here. And you can see, I, I think if I show Robert, he'd tell me what the feed rate is of this. Um, it's looking pretty good. It's, it's shining a bit, it's taking a bit off there, but more off this edge. So I'll carry on for a bit. You don't want to watch. I'll tell you how long it takes, talk in a minute. Sorry, you've got the wobbles. Right, I've done that. I've got, I'm happy with that now. Um, I've spent another five or 10 minutes on it. It's looking really good. I just want, I just want, I just want it to be something like, what I don't want to do is I don't want to end up having so much blade out of one side of the plane to the other, just to get it upright. I'd rather the plane be a little bit closer to right. Anyhow, that's good now. I'm happy with that. This isn't, this still isn't 100% perfect, but it's not far off. I can get that in there you go. So it's not far away. It's not far away at all. Uh, that's it. That's the, that's it done. I could probably now, because of this is the second video. Let's put, let's move this out of the way. Let's put this over here. I could probably now take these cramps off. So should we do that? Because I think they've gone off. Let me just put you in a better position because you look really awkward there. Is that better? Yeah, you look a bit more comfortable there. You look really awkward. And you were just crunched up too much. Right, anyhow, this has been on for about half an hour now so you know this is type 1-3 um, I can see it's dried in the corners there's no there was a bit of scrap wood around just to cramp that up so I didn't damage it and it's just it's not that I'm being overly fussy it's just sometimes some of these habits are really good habits to have you don't want to leave half moons or hammer marks or whatever you want to call them in your um, in your jobs and you don't want them on your your jigs either so i'm just going to scrape oh i mean the glue's gone off i'm just going to scrape this out um and just scrape that bit of glue out this is a, i think i've told you about this chisel before it's a lovely old chisel I've got. and uh it's um it's an eyesorby Shall I show you? Because it is beautiful. It's an eyesorby chisel. It's been hollow ground at some point. Uh, I've had to rescue this. But look at that for a chisel. It's gorgeous. The handle is damson. Um, but it's got a problem and that's why I use it for moving glue. The problem is the back still isn't flat. And it's had hours. Loads of hours. And it's still not flat. So... It's on its way. It'll be a lovely chisel. It's, it slowly gets shorter, but not much. But that's got to be, before it gets promoted, um, that's got to be sorted. So, just scrape out the glue. This is feeling very, it's feeling very plywoody now. It's feeling very um, dusty in a way. I'm just going to make sure this surface is okay. Bits of muck coming off. Right, let's get that screwed on. Are you stopping to watch that? Yes? Oh, okay. You don't have to. No, don't. Don't turn off. Don't turn off, I shouldn't say that. So clearance hole down to about there one two about inch and three quarters from the end I 
think that's about it. One, two, three. Tidy up. Um, countersink. Oops, nearly fell over there. And now one eighth, just one eighth pilot, just a little to break through, make sure everything's okay. Could put a bit of wax on these screws, but there's a bit of glue down there that might help. So I've slowed the speed down. There you go. The clutch is set about right. The heads are nearly flush. That'll do me. There we have it. So on shooting board. The plane's sharp, I sharpened it the other day. Should we have a go with it? I mean you guys have um and you can see I'm not there's no editing so I I can't um, I can't hide from you guys can I? So I'm just I'm just turning the adjuster, getting the blade to come out. I took it a long way in. Ooh, now it's come too far out. Took it a long way in, and I know that the top's got to come out more than the bottom, so I can adjust the lateral to get it square. Too much on the lateral. Uh, I think that might be too much. Now let's go. I'm prepared for it to hit this, so let's. No, it's not even hitting that. We're not cramped down, but we're just going to try a bit of plywood in there. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, too much cut for that. Let's just take a bit back off. There we go. Working for you? It's working for me. That's cool. So let's see what we've got. Uh, any good? Happy with that? Show you a bit of light. Get rid of the light. You know what? That's spot on. That's absolutely spot on. Um, what I get the guys to do sometimes, guys, ladies, to do sometimes is to actually hold it up to daylight or a light source. That way there's no... So you can see that. Let me just... Oh, blimey. Why have you gone so far? Sorry. How's that? Right, okay. So, daylight, yeah? No daylight. Hold it against the bottom. You get the gist. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. So, square used to set that up is the same square used on that. Make sure your square's right, that's important. What I've got here is a, uh, a Kinex uh, 150 by 100 square that's pretty flipping good and, and, and cost me a few quid, so it should be good. So there we have it. Um, next thing to do really, 
He's have a slurp of tea. Where are we? Oh, you're all right. Right. Essentially, it's made. What I need to do now is knock off some of these hard, these um, sharp edges. So that won't take long. Um, oh, this is nice. Look at this. Look what I've just spotted. Look how the... Can you see how the um, plywood has... Uh, see, I enjoy things like that. I can see the plywood reflecting down here, showing the lines of the end grain on the end of the... on the bottom of the plane. Right, so yeah, I'm just going to knock a couple of corners off there. Um, so there you go, Gary. There's one. You said you wanted to be the first person, one of the first to use it. So uh, it'll be around next week. It'll be sorted. What it means now, if I'd have sorted out a bit quicker, I'd have gone on with the camera. But for today, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm absolutely shattered. Um, it's one of these, uh, it's an age thing and all the rest of it. I'm just going to pull that down there. Take the corner off of the sandpaper, that's done. Leave that sharp. Done that, turn it over. Let's get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of this. Now the thing is, well, our friend Mr. Cosman has got a nice big workshop with loads of space. Where am I going to put this? And I've been thinking about this the last couple of days. Um, there's two things. There's two more things to think about. One of them is, where is it going to live? Where am I going to put it? And the second one is, to oil or not to oil? Do I protect this surface from moisture? Um, moisture is the enemy, really, because if the moisture gets in and it starts buckling around, it ain't going to be very good, is it? So I think I will, uh, and I don't use sanders and things. It'll just be a bit quick wipe over with some sandpaper. Let me do that while you're there, because he says, you move my sandpaper. Um, so yes, do we... Where do we store it and what do we put and finish on it? And I'm thinking maybe storage as a, as a good habit could be that it just sits on the, on the table saw. Um, the table saw is probably one of the flattest things I've got in the workshop. Um, I don't want to shove it down the side of somewhere and, and put it down here. I'd rather it stay flat. And that's a good, that's a good sign that it's not going clunk clunk. I'd rather it stay flat. So I'm wondering whether it should be on the saw. That way then it's on a nice flat surface. So, um, but do I oil it? Can you put in the comments whether you think it should have, I mean, I've got a bit of Danish oil around. Um, do I... Do I just give it a couple of coats of Danish oil? Here's my dodgy corner. Which now I'm not so bothered about. Um, get rid of the F. I don't... Um, I'm not a big fan of pencil marks. They, uh, they make your work dirty. And they... Um, Look at all this from the plane, that's so smooth. Nobody wants to see your little marks. So that can go. This feels pretty good. 
I didn't run a plane down there, which I could do at some point. It's got a little bit of a dark mark there. Let's just do that now, just to get it out of the way. Um, can you guys still see? We're chopping a bit of beach now, so it's a bit, you know, plywood can be a bit of a pain, but beach is going to be, um, you're not happy. That needs sharpening, so let's put that onto one side. Let's bing out. So where are we? 20 minutes, look. The old Preston's out, which is a fabulous plane. Um, not too much cut on it, I don't think. Yeah, it's a real, give Lee Nielsen a run for its money. So that's done now, that's beautiful, smooth. Just take that corner off. Any other corners I've missed. There is there's a little bit of there's a little bit of muck in the corner there. And a bit of that pencil off. Right, there you go. So one shooting board done. Uh, method, Mr. Cosman and myself. I like I like the way Rob Cosman sets it up to the square to make sure that's beautiful. I like the cramping of gluing and cramping of that. I approve of that. I think it's a brilliant way of doing things. I've been doing it for a long while, years, where you where you clamp a piece of wood um, in a specific place, let it dry, then come back and then do more fixings. If you try and do the fixing. The, the, the glue fixing and the mechanical fixing at the same time, it can be a pain in the neck. So this is my view now. This is pretty good. Um, she works, she's great, we've proved it, we've got a lovely bit of... So now, I might as well sort out the thumbnail shot. So, um, I mean, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? So, how do, what do we want for the thumbnail shot? I mean, the good thing is, it's a proper, it's a proper um, shooting board plane. So, well, I'll sort that out. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. This isn't video number 20. This is video number 25 or 6 or 7, I don't know. But, um, like, share, subscribe. Tell your mates, uh, know anybody who's into doing woodworking and whatever. Don't forget, buy me a coffee. I've had six people support me so far. Seven people support me so far on buy me a coffee this year. So um, I'm going to be shouting about this a bit more because the idea is for me to keep going with this and making uh, cool content. That will be cool content. Let's get in there. Um, but yeah. Buy me a coffee. There's no adverts yet. Yet, see? And, um, yeah, more stuff coming along soon. More goodies, more... Yeah. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in a little while. Cheers.